Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 244 of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about the idea of a reference station and start to fill out the design. Let's just start with an aside. I have been asked many times, what radio should I buy? And my traditional answer has been, it's a highly personal decision. Well, that doesn't satisfy them. It doesn't really satisfy me. Um, there are so many good radios out there. But more recently, I simply answer, get the ICOM 7300 because it's such a good radio, very popular, and you will likely not go wrong with it. It's not a beginner, beginner radio. It is a nice radio that is marketed for first time users, but it's a radio you can grow into. And depending on what you do with ham radio, maybe never grow out of it. A uh, very nice little radio. So this led to the idea in my mind of a reference station, a complete station with specific recommendation for every element needed for successfully uh, going on both HF and VHF. Here are the topics that we'll cover today. The concept of a reference station and the purpose of doing one, uh, both for technician and for general. And then we'll talk about the elements of a station reference design. And I'm going to go ahead and not just talk about it in generalities, but roll out the main HF receiver or transceiver which will be the ICOM IC7300. I actually bought one of these just for this project, uh, the reference design, because I did not feel that my Yesu FTDX3000 is a beginner's radio. Uh, but the ICOM7300 is something you can start with and grow with. And then, of course, I'm going to end with an invitation for comments. Let's talk about the concept of a reference design. Uh, from the word reference design, you get the idea that this is something you can look at and maybe adapt to what you want. Um, a, con a, a reference design is a design. Emphasis on a versus the design, but a design that meets a certain set of requirements or needs. In this case, the requirement is to create a station that meets the need of a new tech or new general licensee uh, to get you successfully on the air and operating happily. Uh, this could also apply to someone who is coming back into ham radio after many years away, or maybe went all the way to extra in one sitting and would like to know uh, what to do for the details. Now, the design of the uh, reference station will be comprehensive. That is, everything required to make the station operational, whether it's the radio, the feed line, the antenna, the grounding, the power supply, and so on. All of those items will be mentioned in upcoming videos uh, uh, as we build out the reference station. Note that the design is specific, not a radio, but this radio, okay? So it's not just glittering generalities. We're going to get down into specifics. Now, I mentioned earlier I'm going to pick the ICOM 7300, or have picked it. So when getting on FT8, we'll use that radio. When practicing uh, net uh, behavior, we'll use that radio. When doing a contest, we'll use that radio. So the design is very specific. Now, a ham can simply duplicate the reference station. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, or slot in alternatives if desired. For example, if you already have an HF radio that you really like, well, fine, keep on using it. Um, but uh, remember, again, I will be uh, making all of my examples with the reference station design. But the radios these days are so good, uh, you shouldn't have any trouble uh, either way. Now, the advantage of the reference station is that all the parts can be used together successfully to meet all the requirements or needs of a new tech or new general, or for that matter, one who's been around for quite a while. The purpose of a reference design is to make it easy. Make it easy to follow a pathway to a successful station. 
the equipment choices are known to work. It takes the guesswork out of what to purchase or obtain, and it can keep costs down by avoiding going down blind alleys. For example, buying some little thing that had a nice advertisement but doesn't really work. Now, cost is not a primary consideration here. If it were, we'd start off with uh, something like the uh, Yesu FT450 or the ICOM 718. These are truly entry-level radios and won't last you very long in your amateur radio journey. I'm going to go for what I think uh, are good devices that cost a reasonable amount in the amateur radio market and uh, will be something that can keep you happy for a while. Now let's talk about the tech. I'm not going to go into advanced uses of the tech frequencies like weak signal work and so on. I'm going to talk about getting on the air with FM. Uh, that includes both handheld, mobile, and for your home station. How to take advantage of repeaters, how to take advantage of internet connected services such as Winlink, DMR, DSTAR, C4FM, uh, hotspots, and digital connected services such as Packet. Okay, so we're going to go beyond the hi, hello, this is my first QSO on my handheld to, you know, really digging into some things here that you can do commonly uh, with the radios without having to get exotic and pay for very expensive equipment. Let's talk about some elements of the technician reference station. We'll talk about radios, including all the hoofra having to do with programming. We'll try and pick radios, both a handheld and a mobile, usually um, a base station at home is uh, a mobile radio that's, you know, uh, just in your station using a station power supply. Uh, we're going to talk about FM and digital radios like DMR and so on, and struggle with this not called programming and go through, again, using a reference radio, using that as our example of uh, how to program it, how to use all the features. We'll be talking about antennas, coax, uh, grounding, what to do with that, where to get power supplies. We'll also talk about computer interfaces and digital operating. Uh, and then, this is very important, measurements. Uh, routine test equipment, uh, things like that that you can use, what you might do with them. Uh, and that will include antenna analyzers and so on. Now here is where new generals can get kind of stuck making that transition to HF. Okay, so the primary goal here of the reference station is to get you going on HF. Initially on the most active bands, 40 and 20, and initially with single sideband. Okay, and we'll talk about the basics of communicating. Rag chewing, contesting, special events, DX, all these kinds of things that you can do. We'll also take a look at exploring digital modes like FT8. And again, all of these will be demonstrated and uh, described using the reference station. Also want to get you CW capable so that if you want to go that down that line, uh, you know what you have. Um, a lot of hams start out on CW, get frustrated, uh, hopefully we can get you past that, but again, most of the emphasis will be on single sideband and digital, and we'll do everything along this line here through and including the DX. So let's talk about the elements of the general reference station. There will be the radio and power supply, the antennas, cables, tuners, uh, getting it all set up, how to set up a station that works for you this grounding and lightning protection bugbear that uh, uh, is, can be controversial. There's often more heat than light when we're talking about grounding, but there are right ways of doing it. We'll talk about digital interfaces, although I will note that the digital interface for the 7300 is built in. But if you buy a different radio or have an older radio or something like that, it may not have the digital interface built in, so we will cover that. 
we'll talk about measurements, watt meters, um, and uh, you, how to use your VOM for power uh, to measure your DC power, and so on and so forth. Now, because it is so popular, we will talk about portable and mobile operation, things like go boxes and so on. We may, I'm going to put a fairly low priority in this, but we may address special operating techniques such as QRP or summits on the air. And we will talk about all the digital types of things. We'll try and get into WinLink and other things that you can do on the air as well as FT8. As I mentioned, I've selected a reference station for HF radio. I didn't have one, so I went and bought one. The ICOM IC7300, which as of today is available for 1024 on both DX Engineering and Ham Radio Outlet, okay? Attributes, it's a 100 watt radio, 160 through 6 meters, single sideband CW digital touchscreen user interface, it's a software-defined radio. It's very versatile. Now, note there is no VHF or UHF capability because I am assuming that you will use your technician station uh, for that. Now, can you go well beyond that? Well, of course you can, but the reason for the selection is it's an extraordinarily popular radio. It's priced around $1,000 and, and can be used in a point-and-shoot mode. You can just set up the controls and then just go have fun uh, operating a single sideband, you know, on a Saturday afternoon or something. I call this point and shoot mode. Uh, even my good digital camera has a point and shoot mode. Um, and there's lots of room in the radio for growth and further exploration. Uh, it's a tremendous radio. Now, some alternative radios. Uh, might be the ASU FT991A, the ASU FT450, ICOM 7100, 718, the Kenwood TS590SG. Now, reasons for going with an alternate. Uh, one good reason is you already have it, okay? Or your Elmer has it, or lots of people at your club have it, or something like that. If you don't have a reason like that and you have not yet procured an HF radio, I would recommend go ahead and get the reference station HF radio because we'll all grow together on this, learn how to use it in all the various situations we're going to be using this radio for the demonstrations. Now there are components to come, of course, the power supply. DC distribution, antennas, tuners, cabling, grounding, logging software, digital software, and interfaces. Note that the IC7300 already has a digital interface built in and many, many other things that we will do uh, with this reference station. I am very excited about the concept. I hope you are too, and I look forward to bringing you more videos in this series. I hope this will prove useful to you and we will in future videos uh, expand upon this idea of the reference station, expand with other specific products that would be uh, good for you to add to your station as you grow into becoming either a new tech or a new general. Today granted we talked mostly about the uh, general side but we'll come back with more on the technician side. I would like to make an announcement. I have for some time had available the technician and the extra training videos on a little thumb drive, uh, but today I'm announcing that they're also available for the general class licenses. If you will go to dcastlercom support, you'll see all three grades available, plus the ability to throw a little something into the tip jar, a recurring tip jar on Patreon, uh, Patreon uh, plus a recurring tip jar on PayPal, and uh, a few goodies to buy on Amazon that might help you too. If you have any questions, of course, send an, a question to hamradioanswers at gmail.com. That's all one word, hamradioanswers at gmail.com. So until we next meet, 73.